watching Henry AI Labs. This video will present hierarchical neural architecture search. In this paper, a novel way of encoding neural network architectures is presented that makes neural architecture search much more efficient and much more feasible using the algorithms evolutionary search and random search. This paper is in line with the September theme on Henry AI Labs of AutoML neural architecture search and hyperparameter optimization with a focus on neuroevolution. Please subscribe for more deep learning and AI videos. In previous videos, we've seen different data structures used to encode neural networks that can then be searched over with neuroevolutionary algorithms to discover new neural architectures that perform better on different image classification, object detection, and language modeling tasks. So in the genetic CNN, neural networks are encoded by using these bit strings, where the ones and zeros represent connections from certain computational nodes to previous nodes in these microarchitectures that compose the network. In randomly wired neural networks, we've seen how graph permutation algorithms like the WS algorithm can be used to construct graphs that are then converted to directed acyclic graphs to represent neural network architectures. In hierarchical neural architecture search, we represent neural networks as a composition of these blocks. So the first block here, G sub 1, is a representation of 1 by 1 convolutions, 3 by 3 convolutions, and 3 by 3 max poolings combined in this way to form this substructure. These substructures are then combined in this kind of way to form an overall massive neural network. The hierarchical neural architecture search composes neural networks using this kind of compositionality. Up top is shown the final cell. The final cell has five predefined nodes and they're connected by using these substructures denoted as motifs in the paper. These motifs pictured below, such as motif 1, are made by using a predefined set of nodes such as 4 and then connecting them by using a set of primitive operations like max pooling, convolution, separable convolution, and these kinds of things. So the, probably the most useful way of understanding hierarchical neural architecture search is to see exactly how it's implemented in the low-level encoding. So this is the adjacency matrix that is used to encode this motif 1 here. You see how this connection from 1 to 2 is a max pooling? That would be represented by having max pool or the uh, binary uh, bit combination that encodes max pooling represented in this ij location of the adjacency matrix. So you see how this is a directed acyclic graph. There are zeros all in the diagonal representing no cycles between nodes, and the entire left half of the matrix is zeros, so that it has this topological ordering that is needed to render a neural network from an adjacency matrix or a directed acyclic graph representation. So with this motif one, we have six different operations like max pooling, convolution it can choose from, and then in the um, different slots that you can fill this, there are five different uh, five different slots to fill in with different operations. So overall, there are about 46,000 different ways to assemble motif one. And overall, we can compute this by having the number of low-level operations raised to the power of n, n minus one over two, where n represents the uh, four here, the number of nodes in the motif. So from the level, next level up, we have the cell, which is composed of the motifs. So we have six different motifs, similarly to how we have six different primitive operations. And again, this is represented in this adjacency matrix. The only difference here is that we've added one more row because now we have five uh, nodes rather than four. So as you see, when we add five nodes compared to four, the combinatorics of this space already starts to blow up because we replace this with the four times three over two with five times four over two. So we have six to the 10 compared to six to the five. So with our understanding of how the low-level representations are encoded in, neural ar in a hierarchical neural architecture search, we revisit this paper to see how the motifs are composed of these primitive building blocks, and then these motifs are stacked together to form the cells, which overall make up the microarchitectures in the neural network. One other detail to note, a subtle detail for implementation's sake, is that when you have multiple feature maps coming into the same node this way, they're either depth-wise concatenated or a one-by-one -one convolution is used to control the channel dimensionality. So these are the primitives at the bottom level of the hierarchy used in the paper. There's one by one convolutions, three by three depth wise convolutions, and then things like identity and none. So having none just be a primitive, none meaning no uh, edge or no data flow between nodes, it kind of biases the network towards being pretty dense in the number of edges it has, especially when it does its mutations and it picks one of these operations and selects another one at a uniform distribution. So generally these networks are biased towards having many connections. The other way of structuring the neural architecture would be by using a flat representation, contrastingly to the hierarchical representation. So in the flat representation, you would have this uh, adjacency matrices, which exactly represent all 11 nodes in the directed acyclic graph of the neural network. So in this case, you have all these different uh, slots in the adjacency matrix to fill up with the different operations, leading to uh, six to the 
11 uh, times 10 over 2, different ways of filling out this matrix. So this is a much larger number than the hierarchical neural network space, even though it's still pretty large at 6 to the 46. And this 6 to the 46 is derived by these, this uh, list of the different combinations. So you have 6 to the 10 different ways to fill in the topmost cell with the different uh, motifs, and then you have 6 different motifs, each with 6 to the 6 different ways of being constructed. So this is the neuroevolutionary search used over the hierarchical neural architecture space. In our neuroevolutionary algorithms, we always have this structure of initialization, evaluation, crossover, but sometimes we can omit mutation, and in this case we do. So we'll focus on the mutation, selection, and initialization techniques used in this paper. So mutation in the hierarchical representation is done by first selecting a level, such as two or three, in this case, and then sampling a motif from that level, sampling a successor to the node and a predecessor, and then replacing the operation. So for example, taking this max pool and replacing it with a three by three convolution or something like that. So the way that they uh, pick which uh, members of the species are reproduced or mutated to form new uh, architectures, they do this tournament selection algorithm. So basically they keep a memory table of all the genotypes and their evaluated fitness. They sample 5% of the members of the, from the table and then the sample with the highest fitness is selected to be mutated. The initialization technique they use in this paper is very interesting. From their population size of 200 genotypes, they're all initialized with identity connections everywhere. So this is a lot different from other techniques that do things like minimal initialization or just random initialization. So what they then do is they do 1,000 mutations of each of these initializations to uh, start off the search. So this is a very unique way of initialization. It sort of is a way of uh, verifying the mutation operation as well. One of the most promising characteristics of neuroevolutionary algorithms is their ability to take advantage of distributed or parallel computing systems. These algorithms show the asynchronous evolution algorithm used to evaluate the hierarchical neural architecture search. So what they do is they have 200 GPUs that are implementing this algorithm. Each GPU receives a genotype, trains it, and then updates the memory table. The controller node doesn't necessarily have to be a GPU, but what it does is it samples 5% of that uh, memory table, the genotypes and their fitness, and then it returns uh, a new architecture to the GPU to go train and then update the memory table. So these workers don't have to wait for each other to be finished in order to keep updating the population. So this is another really interesting thing about the paper is their comparison of evolutionary and random search over the hierarchical space. So they are using 200 GPUs, and it takes about one hour to evaluate each of the genotypes. So interestingly, they just take 200 random permutations of the different directed acyclic graphs representing the hierarchical neural architecture, and they send these off in, into different uh, GPUs. So in one hour, they train 200 different neural networks randomly sampled from this space. And this result is within 0.3% of their error rate with the evolutionary algorithm. So it kind of says like, does it really matter how you search for the neural architecture or does it matter how you represent it in the first place? So then with the evolution, they do 7,000 rounds of it, 200 members of each population, and this takes about 36 hours to search for. So you might be asking with your own implementation, if you're interested in using neuroevolution for your computer vision or language model or any kind of deep learning problem, how long will this algorithm take me? Well, this really depends on if you're using a distributed GPU system because this algorithm is asynchronous. It really scales well with uh, more GPUs. And then you have to ask, how long does training each model take? So the architecture search is computationally demanding, hence the value of this representation and these kinds of ideas to speed it up. So one other really uh, important concept in neural architecture search is to understand macro and micro neural architecture search. So in these experiments, we're searching for these green cells. So in each experiment, the cell is plugged into this small CIFAR-10 model. And then later on for evaluation, it's scaled up in this way by repeating the cell in a new macro architecture. And then in ImageNet, it's scaled up in this way. So you see how we're searching for this green cell, whereas all the other cells are hard-coded by human designers. This chart here shows how this scales from the small to large network. So you see how as the small network is trained, the large model is correlated with the success of the small model or the uh, design of this internal cell. The first presentation of the results from the study is somewhat discouraging. The flat representation seems to outperform the hierarchical representation. However, there is a new phenomenon to look at, which is the parameter complexity of the flat models compared to the hierarchical. The flat models have a vicious parameter explosion due to the uh, density of these connections. So you see how in the flat representation and our bias towards having edges based on our operation space, the networks are going to look something like this. You see how one is connected to two, 
three, four, and 11, and then you know all these other nodes, five, six, seven, eight, up to 11, as well as all these nodes. Compare that with our hierarchical structure, which is much more sparse, sparse in its connectivity. This table shows the improvement achieved with the hierarchical representation. When scaling up from the small network to the large network for CVAR10 and then the very large network for ImageNet, the hierarchical representation is able to achieve a higher performance, probably due to the parameter complexity of the flat representation. This is the comparison of this representation with the previous state-of-the-art techniques, like the large-scale evolution and then the genetic CNN algorithm, as well as things like the ResNet 1001 architecture. This is a comparison with other neural architecture techniques like NosNet A, and then hand-designed networks like Inception ResNet V2, Exception, and the Inception V3. This is the final cell discovered again, just to show the concept of the neural architecture search and the hierarchical representation one last time. So with this technique, it shows that clever encodings of neural architectures can even lead to random search finding good results. So maybe this should be where we shift our attention in neural architecture search research. It's also interesting to think about how this relates with the success of randomly wired neural networks, even when they all use the same building block. So in our algorithm, we have this operations raised to the power of the nodes in the network. In the randomly wired network paper, they use the same operation for every connection, a three by three separable convolution. If we use this kind of, uh, shortcut with the operations, we can maybe represent much more architectures with this hierarchical representation. So one other thing that's interesting is the speed of the search. At the time of this publication, which was last revised February 2018, they reference other architecture searches take 11 days using 250 GPUs and 4 days using 450 GPUs. So it's very interesting to think about how we can speed up our neural architecture search to make this much more feasible for small labs and developers. Thanks for watching this explanation of hierarchical neural architecture search from Henry AI Labs. Please subscribe for more deep learning and artificial intelligence videos.